In this week's Instant Expert Guide, we're looking at the latest trailer for Shinji Mikami's The Evil Within, an upcoming survival horror that we're hoping will be a chilling return to form for the legendary developer. So come with us now as we round up all the things you may have missed in the latest trailer and what they all might mean. And make sure you stick around till the end for an insight into the horrible things that Mikami has planned for the game's heroes. It's pretty standard stuff up to this point, but here's where it gets interesting. Now we know that you start off investigating the Beacon Mental Asylum. We'd venture that this crashed ambulance is actually from the asylum, suggesting that at some point you're going to have to make a quick getaway. And that leads us on to our second point. After the crash, Sebastian ends up lost in the wilderness, which would be bad enough if it wasn't for all the ritual sacrifice. As we move on, you'll see that there are loads of different locations in The Evil Within. Now we've seen this before, but here's a reminder. Sebastian carries a torch on his belt for lighting the many gloomy places in the game which you can carry instead of your weapon. Also check out the hanging bodies in the background of this abandoned village, a location that ties seamlessly into the wilderness location we just saw. And here's yet another new location, a very, very Resident Evil looking mansion. With the asylum, church, village and this mansion, that makes at least four different areas we'll visit at the very least. Now this is a particularly interesting one. When we first saw this we thought the long nail, slightly feminine build and a reflection in his face pointed to some kind of psychological trauma in Sebastian's history, perhaps a dead wife or some other similar horror trope. However there's a bit later on that we're sure ties into this and it might reveal some of the basis for the Evil Within story. Up next we've got this bit which is clearly Sebastian exploring some kind of dreamscape. We already know that much of the game is going to blur the line between fantasy and reality, and this is yet another clear example of this. Now you enter the asylum with two partners, both of whom appear to be in trouble in this trailer. First up we've got Joseph Oda, a half Japanese detective. The developer has said that Sebastian will be alone for most of the game, and judging from what we're seeing here, that's pretty bad news for Joseph. Now Mikami is the master of door opening in horror games, and yes that is totally a thing, and the evil within continues this trend. Sebastian can open doors slowly to see what horrors await him on the other side, or kick them open recklessly. We pick the first one. Now here we've got our first glance at someone who could be a boss character. There's a certain serial killer vibe to him, and the mannequins suggest some kind of female fixation. If your other partner Julie has gone missing, it's here we'd start looking. You should also check out his clothes, they're very different from the ragged monster garb we've seen so far on the other characters. We'd venture that perhaps he's a normal person that's lost the plot. The fact that his face is concealed is also pretty telling. He could be hiding his identity for a reason, or the white face mask could be a reflection of his obsession with the mannequins. Look closely at this mound of flesh and fingernails and you'll see that it's actually made up of multiple human bodies. Dramatic transformations are a very Mikami thing, if you think back to the likes of William Birkin from Resi 2, or it could be some sort of unholy construct made by one of the Evil Within's many deranged inhabitants. Back in the village now and if you look closely you'll see that this woman is still clearly alive. Lovely. She's dressed like she's from the backwards or perhaps from a different era altogether. The spikehead villager seems to be a certain type of enemy, one which we've seen before that will appear again in this trailer. Fast forward past a quick shot of the butcher to here and you can see the same type of enemy wielding a firebomb. We know Sebastian can burn enemies to conserve ammo and now it appears that they can do the same to you. Judging from this bit we're going to be trapped in some sort of set piece with the keeper, the safe headed boss creature we've seen in all the trailers so far. Also check out the reflective chains to the right, we're thinking that you might have to shoot these off to escape. Now this picture throws back to the faceless figure that we mentioned earlier. The boy on the left strongly resembles the person we saw turning around. As for the girl, the predominance of red has us thinking that maybe she's Rebone Laura, the long-fingered chimera thing shown in the live action trailer. Worst of all, the picture suggests that these are the children of the two adults we see here, and we're not getting much of a loving parent vibe from the painting. All in all, it looks like something extremely nasty has happened. Here's a character we haven't seen before, who's a doctor of some sort, perhaps in the full flow of losing his mind. Interestingly enough, in terms of build, he's very similar to the butcher we saw earlier. We've also got a glimpse of another new character here, also decked out in medical gear, and the environment seems a lot like the asylum that you start off in. 
They both also seem to know the character we see here first, indicating that he perhaps at least starts off sane. Now, here's another interesting one. At first we thought this could be a Saw-style trap, but then it struck us as possibly being a means for Sebastian to explore those memories we saw before. Now, here's a new shot of the hooded figure that we've seen in the past, this time in a church rather than in the asylum. Joseph is here as well, so this must take place before the guillotine section, or you at least have the chance to rescue him. This also shows that you'll be facing that hooded figure, who appears to be covered in what we assume are burns, numerous times in the game. There's a very quick shot here of Rebone Laura, who has the same long black hair as the girl we saw in the painting. And after that, there's this shot of a less isolated area, presumably in the city. This could either be a bomb, or it could be proof that the insidious things we've seen so far are seeping into the normal world. There's a quick shot of the keeper hitting himself on the bonds with a meat tenderizer here, and if that isn't the game saying, don't shoot me in the head, I don't know what is. The whole trailer quite obviously has more of a saw vibe than any of the ones that we've seen so far. Here it looks like Sebastian has to reach inside this not as dead as we hoped guy to get something. And here we've got the first shot we've seen in a while of Julie the Kid Kidman, Sebastian's other partner. Clearly she's in a spot of bother and the timed nature of this trap suggests that we might have to solve some sort of puzzle in order to save her. And if that wasn't saw-like enough for you, even the logo has incorporated an eye-drilling death trap feel to it. Well, that's your horrible lot for now, but if you've spotted something suitably vile that we've missed, please let us know. You can click here to go deep into Watch Dogs with last week's list feature, or here to watch our Evil Within preview.